Welcome to Speak Up and Stay Alive Radio with author, speaker, and your host, Pat Rulo. Finally, someone willing and able to blow the top off hidden healthcare and hospital dangers. She's provocative, upbeat, balanced, fearless, fresh. Pat has over 20 years of experience as a professional public speaker and knows how to approach this important subject with enough humor and wit to keep you informed, entertained, and empowered. Each week you will say, oh, as Pat explores and exposes little-known hospital hazards, delves into the deep waters of dangerous healthcare practices, picks the brains of her good-looking and influential guests to help keep you and your family stay safe in today's fragmented healthcare system. The program is not intended to replace medical advice from a licensed professional, but rather to encourage you to become a well-informed participant in your health and well-being. And now, your host, Pat Rulo. I can't bear get no more, baby. I got too much pride. But I, I, I don't survive. Hello, I'm Pat Rulo, and I will be your hostess, your one stop patient safety radio hostess, where I will spend the next hour serving you a generous helping of everything you need to know to help you and your loved ones stay safe during any doctor or hospital visit. People ask, who are you? Who am I? Well, I am you. I am every person who has ever been in a hospital or doctor's office and has received less than acceptable treatment. I am you, the person who got an infection during a simple outpatient procedure. I am you, the patient whose questions are ignored, who struggles to speak to the doctor as he or she has one foot out the door. I am the missed heart attack, the hospital-acquired infection, the wrong diagnosis, the unanswered call button. I want this patient safety show to be about you, your family, your friends, and your loved ones. Speak up and stay alive, radio. Yes, that is O-H with an exclamation point will cause you to say O. As each week we delve into little known hospital and healthcare dangers. When you understand why something happens, you are better equipped to do something to change it and prevent it from happening to you. If enough people begin to speak up, together, each of us can alter the current precarious path of today's unsafe healthcare practices. Well, today is the first weekend in July, the best summer month of all. Not only do we have the 4th of July, Happy birthday, America. But we have Bob's big birthday bash coming up and my birthday at the end of the month, which we will just try to ignore. Oh, and hey, we just joined the Twitter ranks this month, too. So if you're a tweetster, follow us at Speak Up Radio. And radio is spelled radio with an H at the end. You know, it stands for O as in oh my or shocking news kind of O. Well, today, our guest segment is also going to be explosive, a random sampling of our weekly two-minute guest experts, all firecrackers in their field. So hang on and let the patient safety fireworks begin. But now, it's time for the healthcare hazard of the week. It's visitors. Well, now you're probably saying, how can a single visitor be a hospital hazard? Aren't there bigger things to worry about? Well, of course there are, and we spend quite a bit of time talking about those hazards on this show. Things like hospital-acquired infections, medication errors and side effects, falls, pressure ulcers, and so on. However, a well-meaning visitor can certainly be a vector for cross-contamination, bringing in who knows what kind of bacteria into the room. A well-meaning visitor can also cause emotional or mental distress or even bring about some accidental physical harm. So let's talk about some general hospital tips on how to be a visitor with mad skills. Now, here's the first and an obvious one. Ask the patient if it's okay for you to visit. And if the patient is too ill to converse, Ask the advocate or the closest family member. Now would be a good time to use your detective skills and listen to the tone of how they respond. Sometimes it's difficult to say no, so pay attention. And if you haven't seen the person in 63 years, now might not be the time to attempt to heal old wounds or rehash childhood differences. If the patient, the family, or the hospital staff says no visitors, 
then yes, that means you. Sometimes those rules are put in place to protect the patient. I vividly remember, because certain family members won't let me forget, the weeks my mom was in intensive care on every piece of life support available. She had an infection of unknown origin, and the doctors were struggling to identify it and treat it. The space was the size of a broom closet, and it was filled with machines, five IV poles, wires, bags, tubes. It was insane. Everyone agreed that this was no place and no time for visitors. Yet certain folks called daily, begging to come, and we kindly but firmly said no. One day, when I had left for what, maybe 20 minutes, these certain folks snuck in. The nurses paged me, and I had to be the bad guy and ask them to leave. What germs were they bringing in? What emotional stress were they adding by standing there crying and wringing their hands? Sometimes no means no, especially when it is in the best interest of the patient. So don't be one of those certain folks who thinks no visitors doesn't mean you. Now, visitors are allowed. Keep the visit short and quiet. I always found it odd that people who seldom saw my mom in real life felt it necessary to show up in the hospital and wake her up just because they had arrived. Be respectful and understand that it's not easy to sleep in the hospital, and sleep is essential to healing. Also, take cross-contamination seriously. In the hospital, it is literally a life-and-death decision. If you decide not to wash your hands and use alcohol gel every time you enter the patient's room, guess what? You could be responsible for spreading deadly bacteria like C. diff or MRSA. And remember, every time you touch an object like the TV remote, door handles, bed trays, bed rails, privacy curtains, you've contaminated your hands. So think germaphobe while visiting someone in the hospital. Oh, and remember, when you go home, don't plop on your sofa wearing the same clothes and shoes you wore at the hospital. Change clothes and launder your outfit in hot water. You certainly don't want to bring any nasty bugs into your home. Now let's talk about gifts. No one wants to visit a patient without bringing something, right? While flowers are the norm, they do carry allergens with the pollen, and that just might not be helpful to a patient with a compromised immune system. The same goes for balloons. Some folks are allergic to latex. Maybe not the patient, but a staff member. I never knew about any of this, but I remember one day the florist delivered a giant arrangement of lilies to my mom's room. The next morning, they were missing. When I inquired at the nurse's station, I was told that nurse so-and-so had a lily allergy, of all things, and could not attend to my mom the previous evening because of the flowers. Whoops, there goes a hundred dollars. And here's another weird flower story. This one lady would routinely visit my mom and bring flowers. However, she never thought to bring a vase, as if we would just happen to have an extra vase handy stashed in the nightstand. So she would boldly grab the large container bottle of alcohol that the wound team used every morning to clean my mom's stage four pressure sore, and she poured it down the drain. She would then fill it with water and stuff the flowers inside. When I asked her politely not to do this, she retorted, I used to be a nurse. There's plenty of alcohol in the storage room. Well, lady, that might be correct, but what happens every morning when the wound team removes the pressure sore bandage, reaches to grab the alcohol, and finds it filled with flowers. They have to stop what they're doing, open wound to the world, and run around to find a new container of alcohol. Need I say more? Oh, and who do you think got billed for those bottles of alcohol? That's right. Ex-nurse flower visitor reminded me that mom's health insurance covers incidentals. Well, that certainly is one way not to be a good visitor. So, what should you bring as a small token of your well wishes? Well, I don't know, opt for a card or a book or magazines, or even better, a container of disinfecting wipes and a bottle of hand sanitizer for the tray table, or a handmade sign that says, please wash your hands before touching my friend Gladys, or one step better, a copy of my book, Speak Up and Stay Alive. Now, those are gift ideas that can really make a difference. And many folks like to bring food as a gift or a treat. My advice, just don't. 
so many times the patient is on a restricted diet, and what you bring in, while tempting, could undermine their recovery or might interfere with medications. I know this from experience. My mom was supposed to be on a strict, no-salt diet while in the hospital. People would come to visit with food and offer potato chips. When I would insist on, no, the response usually was, oh, one little chip isn't going to hurt her. That disregard for my mom's well-being sent me into orbit. And speaking of food, don't eat the patient's food, even if they say go ahead because they don't like jello or whatever. Many times, the quantity of food that a patient eats or doesn't eat is measured and monitored. If visitors continually eat the patient's food, the nutrition staff may not be alerted to the fact that the patient may be on his or her way to malnutrition. And believe it or not, malnutrition and dehydration in the hospital is cause for concern. Plus, it's not that tasty anyway. And then there was the lady who showed up with a sore throat. Here my mom was fighting for her life, and this one had to lean in as close as possible to whisper who knows what into her ear and spread who knows what all over her. If you're not feeling well, stay home. No need to potentially infect the patient or the hospital providers. And that reminds me to say that if you don't have to bring a child with you, don't. Kids always have something. They seldom wash their hands. They touch everything. Not good for the patient, the child, or you. Oh, and always dress nicely and be respectful of the staff. You're kind of like the spokesperson for the patient, so you want to make and leave a good impression. And speaking of leaving, before you leave, make sure the bed rails are up, the chairs and tables are out of the way, and that the room is in safe order. You don't want to leave and have your patient get up to go to the bathroom and trip over a misplaced garbage can. Well, I'm sure I could spend the rest of the day talking about general hospital tips on how to be a good visitor. Most of it is common sense. And maybe it's just me, but sometimes the best visitor is no visitor at all. I'm Jerry the Germ with a Speak Up and Stay Alive Healthcare and Hospital Safety Snippet just for you. <coughs> Here's our expert, Pat Rulo. Hey, Jerry, did you know that people are talking dirty and don't even know it? What do I mean? Think of cell phones and office telephones. Talk about germ collection devices. The germs on a person's hands go onto the phone, and a lot of respiratory viruses are expelled when you talk, sneeze, or cough. Thousands of people each year miss time from work thanks to all of this dirty talk. Don't waste your money on avoidable doctor visits and out-of-pocket medical expenses. Staying safe is easy. Invite me to speak to your employees. We'll have fun as you learn how to keep a clean and germ-free workplace. And Jerry, what are you doing on the bottom of that lady's purse? Stay safe. Listen to Speak Up and Stay Alive Radio. For more information, go to speakupandstayalive.com. Brought to you by Generation America, the smart and traditional 50-plus membership organization. And they provide a full range of benefits to members. If you're looking for a quality Medicare supplement, their rates are lower than the other 50-plus organization three out of four times. Generation America. To join and to find out more, visit GenerationAmerica.org. Tired of the same old presentations? Can you forward to slide 38, please? Are you looking for a new, out-of-the-box topic for your next event? Want your group to leave inspired, informed, and satisfied? No PowerPoint presentations and dim lights here. No snoring or snoozing goes on during Pat's presentations. To help your entire group, organization, business, or church stay safe during any healthcare or hospital experience, invite Pat to speak. Her presentation formats vary from 15-minute small talks to 30-minute lunch and learns to one-hour events called The Scoop to full days. Pick a topic from her website or request your own. Visit her website, speakupandstayalive.com, or call Pat to discuss how she can make your next event fun, enlightening, and life-saving. Want testimonials? Go to the bulletin board link at the website for color pictures and comments from real people. Again, it's speakupandstayalive.com or call 440-725-5462. That's 440-725-5462. And now, back to the show. 
You're listening to Speak Up and Stay Alive Radio. Now you can join us every Saturday morning on two Cleveland, Ohio stations from 7 to 8 Eastern on AM 1420 WHK and from 9 to 10 Eastern on AM 1220 WHKW and on two Phoenix, Arizona stations on Saturday morning from 6 to 7 Mountain Time on AM 1360 KPXQ and on Sundays in Phoenix from 9 to 10 Mountain Time on AM 960 KKNT. Or you can always listen to us live online from anywhere in the world at the station's websites. I am your hostess, Pat Rulo. So happy to spend this hour with you to help you survive any healthcare or hospital encounter. Well, for today's guest segment, in honor of the 4th of July, I'm bringing you a sampling of all of our weekly two minute guest experts kind of like a box of assorted firecrackers. Some appear weekly on the Cleveland show and others appear weekly on the Phoenix, Arizona shows. So that means that unless you listen to both shows, you're missing out on some seriously brilliant and show-stopping ideas. Now, these fine folks are not only groundbreakers in their field of expertise, but they help support this show. And for that, I am humbled and honored. So as you listen Take note of their advice and contact information. Send them an email, give them a call, and let them know that you appreciate their wisdom. Use them. They can help. And they would not be on this show unless they were top-notch people. Each one is about two minutes in length, just enough time to share an important tip with you. So are you ready? These folks are just like this week's display of fireworks, fast, colorful, dynamic, electric, and you just can't get enough. So listen as I ignite this shower of sparkling patient safety tips. Our first expert is a real bottle rocket. Let's spend the next two minutes with my friend, Casey Quinlan, a patient activist, now famous for the question that should be on everyone's lips when they enter the healthcare world, and that is, how much is that? She's also the author of Cancer for Christmas, making the most of a daunting gift, and she's not afraid to call it as she sees it when it comes to patient safety. Welcome to the show, Casey. It's always great to be here. Thanks. (laughs) Casey, why is that such an important question? How much is that is something that no one asks or very rarely asks in healthcare. As far as I'm concerned, those are the four words that would actually transform healthcare for the better. How much is that? We can educate ourselves. We can educate our doctors because most of the time doctors don't even know. And I think that everyone should be encouraged to understand what the cost of treatment options are so that we can really work toward shared decision making. Is there any other place in our life that we do not ask that question? I can't think of one. Uh. Me neither. I can't think of one. You go to buy a car or you go to buy groceries. Imagine if you go in and you're like, yeah, I want the blue car over there. And then you only find out how much it costs after you take it home and it's already yours and you've signed the papers. That doesn't make sense to me. Part of the problem is many times you ask what a procedure or a test costs and the office staff looks around. Well, I don't know. I don't know what health care insurance oh, you have. But there is a way that a consumer can offer some helpful information and education to the health care teams that they work with. They can visit clearhealthcosts.com or healthcare blue books. There's also costsofcare.org. So I think that if we all work together, patients, doctors, to answer each other's questions, I think we'll be doing a lot better across the board. Absolutely. Ask how much is that. Casey, where can our listeners find out more about you and where can they purchase your book, Cancer for Christmas? There's a link to Amazon from my site, cancerforchristmas.com. And then my main business site is mightycasey.com. And there they can both find links to Cancer for Christmas and all of the other work that I do, both in healthcare and outside of healthcare, to help create media that educate audiences on what the value is that you bring to the planet. And you bring quite a bit to us. You're full of energy. Thank you for sharing yourself and your advice with us today. I know you'll have more goodies for us next week. I'm all Always happy to be here. Thank you, Casey. And here's a cherry bomb for you. (laughs) 
Let's spend the next two minutes with my friend, Hari Khalsa, better known as the healthcare whisperer. In her role as a healthcare advocate and as a family nurse practitioner, Hari knows how to navigate the healthcare system and works with patients all over the country and can help you find the answers you may not get without her. Welcome to the show, Hari. Thank you very much. I'm really glad to be here. Well, today, Hari, give us a little bit more information about health exchanges. What are they and how will it affect our listeners? Okay, that's a great question, Pat, and I and I appreciate that because there's so much, especially when it comes into getting everybody's going to have to have health insurance, and that can be very confusing. And each state is going to have a, a health exchange. Some of them will be run by the federal government and some of them will be run by the states. But in that exchange, you'll be able to look at all different kinds of plans and find the plan that fits you financially and for all the different benefits that it may offer that will fit you and your family. So it's going to be confusing, but you can come to people like me and ask for assistance on how to get through the health care exchanges. And on October 1st, you'll be able to go and look at the exchange and just find out what it's all about so you can get a heads up on what you might be looking for or what or how it's going to work. Well, great. That's why we love having you on the show as a resource for our listeners. Okay, great. I love being on your show. Thank you. <laughs> Hari, how can our listeners find out more about you, and where can they contact you? Well, they can go to my website at healthcarewhisperer.com. They can contact me at 866-980-4325. They can also find me on Facebook at Hari Kulsa or on Twitter at Hari K108. Well, great. Thank you, Hari, for sharing your wisdom with us today. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, and we look forward to your return next week. Oh, great. I look forward Thank you so much. Thank you. And remember to visit Hari at healthcarewhisperer.com. And how about this famous Roman candle? Oh, I don't I don't think he's Roman. Let's spend the next two minutes with our resident cleaning and infection preventionist, Daryl Hicks, nationally recognized as one of the top experts in infection control, as well as author of the book, Infection Prevention for Dummies. Welcome to our show, Daryl. Thanks, Pat. Good to be here. It's always good to have you here. Daryl, we know that double dipping a cracker into dip or a chip into salsa can spread bacteria from a person's mouth to the food. Is there a double dipping rule when it comes to cleaning? There sure is, Pat. One of my pet peeves is to go to a restaurant or a dining facility and see the same bucket and same rag used to wipe tables, wipe seats, and pick up stuff off the floor, and and then they put it back in the bucket and use it the next time. So all you're doing is overloading the disinfectant that's in that bucket, and when it becomes overloaded with soil, then it no longer is a disinfectant. You might as well just be using water. So our folks are trained to uh, set up their bucket with the water mixed with the disinfectant to put their clean microfiber cloths into the bucket. When they pull a cloth out, they wring out the excess disinfectant, and then they fold the cloth in half and half again. That gives them eight sides to that one cloth. After Using those eight sides, then the cloth never goes back into the bucket. It goes into a soiled laundry bag that uh, then goes to the laundry to be washed and dried. Never double dip into a bucket. So even at home, if you clean a bathroom with one cloth, then you should uh, not use that cloth for other bathrooms or other surfaces in the home. Try to use one cloth per room. Great advice, Daryl. So no matter whether we're eating or we're cleaning, no double dipping. No double dipping. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> How can we learn more about you and your book, Infection Prevention for Dummies? It would be on my website, DarylHicks.com. Thank you, Daryl, for joining us today. We look forward to your weekly guest visits, as you always have so much usable information to share. Thanks, Pat. Now, let's listen to our next sparkler. Let's spend the next two minutes with Elizabeth Bailey, patient advocate and author of the book, The Patient's Checklist. 
Welcome to the show, Elizabeth. Thank you very much for having me. Elizabeth, most people don't think of hospitals as dangerous places. Why do you say they are? Well, under the best of circumstances, mistakes in care can be made because doctors and nurses are fallible. They're human. And given the frantic pace and the fragmented care in today's technology-driven hospitals, mistakes in communication and lack of careful attention to detail are not just likely but inevitable. Patient deaths from preventable medical errors in hospitals are one of the leading causes of death in this country. If it was categorized as such, it would be the sixth leading cause of death for Americans. And just consider these statistics of hospital care. A hospital patient, on average, is subject to one medication error per day. Every six minutes, a patient dies in an American hospital from a hospital-acquired infection, an infection acquired after admission, usually from a healthcare worker's failure to simply wash his or her hands. 65% of identified adverse patient events were found to have communication failures as the underlying cause. Simple information is not being properly relayed from nurse to doctor or nurse to nurse at the shift change. That's why I feel that the best thing patients and families can do is be actively engaged and vigilant about monitoring care while they're in the hospital. And your book is a great resource for our folks to stay informed and empowered. So with that in mind, how can our listeners find out more about you and how can they contact you? The easiest way to find out about me and my book is to go to my website, which is thepatientschecklist.com. The book is called The Patient's Checklist and it's 10 simple checklists to keep you safe, sane, and organized during a hospital stay. And of course, it's available on amazon.com. Well, good, good. Thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing your simple hospital checklist as a way to keep us safe, sane, and organized. We look forward to learning more next week. Thank you. And here's our final explosion of light. Here's legal news you can use. Last week, I stopped into the law office of Schraff and King to pick up some up-to-date information about advanced directives. And as I chatted with Pat Schraff and Allison Mance McMeachin, I thought, hmm, Maybe I should share some of this valuable pre-planning information with you. So listen as they answer some of my questions. Welcome to the show, Allison and Pat. Thank you, Pat. Thanks so much. During hospital check-in, we are asked about advanced directives. What exactly is an advanced directive? Specifically, they are referring to a health care power of attorney and oftentimes also a living will. The health care power of attorney is a document in which you can execute naming an agent to make medical decisions for you if you're unable to do that on your own. And a living will is going to take precedence over your health care power of attorney. So a living will declaration stating that you do not wish extraordinary means and measures used to prolong your life in a terminal condition is going to take precedence over your health care agent making a decision that would be different than that. When people begin to plan around health care issues, around financial matters, that they need to look at the big picture, to step back and look at their life, look at their relationships, look at their assets and plan for disability and plan for death. That's excellent advice. And how can our listeners learn more about you and your firm? Our offices are located in Willoughby Hills, Ohio. We have a website. It's www.schraffking.com, and that's spelled S-C-H-R-A-F-F-K-I-N-G.com. We can also be reached at 440-585-1600. Well, it was a pleasure, Pat and Allison. Thank you for being here today, and I appreciate talking with you. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much for having us. Well, I hope you enjoyed our two-minute weekly guest expert vignettes, awesome people doing fantastic work. And if you or someone you know would like to appear as a weekly guest expert, There's not much space left, but I could perhaps squeeze in one or maybe two more. That means I'd have to talk less. Contact me to discuss the possibility. Email me at speak at speakupandstayalive.com or call me directly at 440-725-5462. If you've got something to say that we might want to hear, I'm happy to give it consideration. That's speak 
at speakupandstayalive.com or call 440-725-5462. And stay in your seat. We've got so much more coming up for you. Speak Up and Stay Alive is turning up the heat. Red Hot Patient Safety Radio. Summer just got serious. Oh, that's right. Our summer guest lineup is oh, so hot. And since this show is all about you, our listeners, we want to include your voice. Help us heat things up. Do you have some searing patient safety questions that you would like answered? Well, now's your chance to ask. Simply email us your most burning question and specify which guest to grill. You can find our upcoming steamy guest list at the radio link at the speakupandstayalive.com website. We only have time for a few questions, so make them juicy. Then tune in for some blazing and amazing expert answers. Send your patient safety questions to speak at speakupandstayalive.com. Summer just got serious. 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 Oh, that's right. You are listening to Speak Up and Stay Alive Radio. Now you can join us every Saturday morning on two Cleveland stations from 7 to 8 Eastern on AM 1420 WHK and from 9 to 10 Eastern on AM 1220 WHKW and on Sundays in Phoenix, Arizona from 9 to 10 Mountain Time on AM 960 KKNT, The Patriot or listen to us live online from anywhere in the world at the station's websites. I am your hostess, Pat Rulo. so happy to spend this hour with you to help you survive any health care or hospital encounter. Well, if you tuned in last week, you were treated to our new favorite game inspired by Bob. Thank you very much. Oh, that's wonderful. Shocking news. <laughs> From around the world. And today we have the most special contestant with us, the editor in chief of the fabulous magazine, Mountain Living Magazine. <laughs> Live and here in the studio today. Welcome, Christine. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. Chris, do you know why do they call you an editor in chief? I don't know where that name comes from. <laughs> Some people say editor and chief. Oh, you are the editor and the chief. Yeah. We might have to call her the chief today, right? <laughs> <laughs> the chief is in the building. Well, I know you came from Denver for a long, fun weekend. Little did you know that you would be playing shocking news from around the world. <laughs> so do you mind joining Bob and Jeremy? No, not at all. I'm excited. All right. Here's how it goes. I will read a healthcare related statement. The three of you will use your keen sense of reasoning to decide if the statement is true or as we call it, a shock. Or is it false, and we call it a crock? So is the statement a shock? Wow. Or a crock? Oh. All right, guys, you ready, Jeremy? Oh, I'm so ready for this. Bob? Oh, let's go for it. Chris? Ready. All right. The Speak Up and Stay Alive shocking news number one. A high-profile bagpipe player from rural England is back in tune after a nearly fatal infection with fungal pneumonia that doctors say sprang from spores that grew inside his beloved instrument. Is this a shock or is it a crock? I got to say that's a shock. Oh, I could only imagine what is in that instrument. <laughs> what do you think, Chris? I think it's true, too. I think it's a shock. It's definitely a shock. Oh, you guys are right. It is true. It is a shock. Ugh. Wow. Oh, there's little research on infection rates among musicians, but I recently read that a 35-year-old man suffered from so-called trombone player's lung. He had a bad cough that lasted for 15 years, and it finally stopped once he started disinfecting the trombone with rubbing alcohol. Ugh. And another musician, a 48-year-old saxophone player, also suffered from lung problems triggered by molds until he started washing his mouthpiece. The moral of the story is, all you pipers out there, keep your instruments as clean as a whistle. <laughs> what That's do you guys why think? I play the drums. Yeah, Chris is quite a drum player. You, you have to bring your drum set with us next time. <laughs> what do you think of trombone lung, Jeremy? Oh, wow. That's something I think I want to stay away from. And I would, yeah, bleach whatever I could do to clean those instruments. Oh, I, know, oh. I never thought about that, did you? All right. Is this fun or what? Yes. Don't say or what, Bob. <clears throat> I'm going to say or what. All right. This Speak Up and Stay Alive. Shocking news number two. Studies in Australia show that eating celery 
burns more calories than it creates, making it a negative calorie food. What do you guys think? What do we think, guys? I'm, I'm saying that's got to be a crock, right? I've heard that before, so I think it's a shock. I think it's a shock. Two shocks and a crock. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Guess what? It's completely a crock. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although it is often proposed as a negative calorie food due to its low calorie content and its high water density and its impressive fiber content, but with all of that chewing and digesting, it does burn calories. It just doesn't burn a lot. And people don't just eat celery. Think of all the dipping that goes on. You know, they're dipping it in cream cheese and peanut butter. So and ranch, everything. You've yeah. got it. So it's okay to keep on crunching that celery, folks, right? Okay. The Speak Up and Stay Alive shocking news, number three. In a poll, 97% of 783 doctors in the United Kingdom had given a patient a sugar pill or an injection of salty water rather than a real medicine at some time in their career. Is that a shock or is it a crock? I'm going to say it's a crock. I think it's a crock, too. Where would they just have this sugar water sitting around? I'm going to actually go with shock. And guess what, Jeremy? Wow. I'm correct again. You are correct. Oh, watch out, you two. Yeah. Shockingly true. One in a hundred of them said that they did this at least once a week. It's called the placebo effect when the patient feels better despite taking a medication that has no active ingredient. But here's the thing. The effect is based on the patient's expectation of a cure. And it works best if someone just has pain. So it's not just pills. There's also fake acupuncture has been shown to reduce the severity of headaches and migraines. Wow. It's amazing of like the psychology of that. And it really does work. A lot of it is just in your head. It absolutely is. But how would you feel, though, if you thought your doctor was giving you a pill and it really was? I mean, you think they should be doing that? Not if they're charging you for the real thing. <gasps> oh, I didn't think about the charge. Good point. Yeah, wait a second. <laughs> How much does salty water cost? Yeah. Huh? Good idea. All right, the Speak Up and Stay Alive shocking news number four. The World Health Organization recommends limiting sodium to less than 2,000 milligrams a day, and the American Heart Association says 1,500 a day. But global sodium intake from commercially prepared food and salt added during our average cooking uh, after we cook Averages nearly 4,000 milligrams a day in 2010. Is that a shock or is it a crock? Uh, that's Sadly, it's a shock. I think? agree. I think that's a shock. I think it is a shock, too. You're right. It's a shockingly true statement. Wow. In the United States, the average intake was about 3,600 milligrams of sodium a day. All countries except Kenya exceeded the American Heart Association's recommendation of 1,500. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in the world. Too much salt intake raises blood pressure. High blood pressure is one of the major contributors to the, to the development of heart disease. So step away from the salt shakers, folks. Yeah. Right? It's just another way to stay out of the hospital. Do you guys think you eat more than 2,000 milligrams of salt a day? No. Probably. Bob, I'd say yeah. I'd say yes. Yeah. Chris? I don't think I do. No, you eat well. You're a good... I try to be good. You do try to be good. What about you, Jeremy? And sadly, I am a pretty bad eater. So, yeah, I think I'm in Bob's category. Mm -hmm. I'm probably right up there. Oh, chocolate chip cookies get him. Oh, we, we bring... <laughs> yeah, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to kill the producer. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. All right, let's shake up and stay alive. Shocking news number five. Food packages with green calorie labels may lead people to see nutrition-poor foods in a healthier light. Is that a shock or a crock? That one's a shock. I agree. I think that's a shock. I'm going to say it's a crock. Mm. You guys, it is a shock. Wow. It's another way that advertisers subconsciously manipulate our buying decisions. A Cornell researcher says in the current issue of the journal Health Communication that consumers are more likely to perceive a candy bar as more healthful when it has a green calorie label compared to when it has a red one, even though the number of calories are the same. And green labels increase perceived healthfulness of foods, especially among consumers who place a high importance on eating healthy. For example, M&Ms and Snickers, they have a green front of packaging calorie flags on the front that are particularly conspicuous to consumers at point of purchase. So I'm sitting here, and I mentioned this to you earlier. I bought a bottle of iced tea. Oh, and I, I see that. And I said to them, I said, right on the front, it said unsweetened, and right at the top, it's in dark green. Mm -hmm. Figure that's healthy, right? Right. Yeah, I guess we think green is natural. And... I was duped. <laughs> Again, it's interesting, the psychology of the thing. And I know McDonald's has the same thing where they've done research where red and yellow 
gets people in the mood to eat and hungry. It's just amazing how the brain works like that. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, that's why we need to be aware of these things so that we can uh, not be tricked. Right, Bob? You got it. All right. No trickies. No tricks for us. (laughs) All right, the last Speak Up and Stay Alive shocking news number six. The world-famous radio hostess of Speak Up and Stay Alive, I guess that would be me, has discovered the safe way to eat that just might keep you out of the hospital, and it's called Moon. Is that a shock or a crock? Um, knowing you, I'm going to go with, that's a shock. Chris? I guess that's a shock. I'm going to say it's a shock, but I don't know what you're doing. No, it's a crock. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. It's not moon, it's called star. Oh. With two R's, and here's what I say. Before you buy any food, before you eat any food, especially shopping, you got to stop. That's the S. You have to think. That's the T. You have to ask, you know, what is this? What am I eating? Do some research, and if you don't like what you find out, the final R is refuse. Simply refuse to buy it. The only way to stop manufacturers from destroying our food and our health is to refuse to purchase their products. So I'm going to say boycott and hit them with your purse. Well, not yours, Jeremy. Can I throw my wallet at him? Throw your wallet at him. (laughs) Deal. As long as it's got money and I'll be behind you. Oh, man. (laughs) Well, thank you, boys and girls, for playing our second ever shocking news from around the world. Can we hear our little sound bite? Shocking news (laughs) from around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for being with us today. Yes, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you, Bobby. You're welcome. And Jeremy. Always happy to be here. I like that shocking news from around the world. Got it. Coming up, more of what you've come to expect from America's favorite healthcare and hospital survival radio show, Speak Up and Stay Alive Radio. That was very fun. I love this game. Well, today, I'm honored to have the spokesperson for this smart alternative to AARP with us today, and he is the legendary Chuck Woolery. Listen, as I spend the next two minutes with Chuck. Welcome to the show, Chuck. How are you? I'm good. How are you? (laughs) Nice to be on your show. Well, thank you. How can our listeners who may currently be involved with AARP make the move to Generation America? When you're moving parts of your life from one entity to another, like AARP to Generation America, they handle all that, take care of all that. And since we're not an insurance company, we're looking for the best deal for you. So a lot of times we can get a much better deal for you. We offer all the same things that they offer. Mm. So it's, it's a lot simpler than you think. And of course, if you haven't really tagged somebody yet and said you're it, then it's obviously easy to come to Generation America as well. Pretty much all Medicare supplement plans are the same. It's the price that's different. And so... Yeah, that well, that's somebody who advocates for you and looks out for your best interest. And, and that's what drew, drew me to them is because that's what they do. And that's what they should do. Yeah. So the first thing we can do is to join Generation America, not just for the excellent benefits, but more importantly, to build the voice of sensible thinking people and to change the current precarious path currently being laid for our seniors, Right. Well, that's why you're on radio. I'm not. That is about as concise as you can possibly put it. Thank you for being here. (laughs) All right. right. Thank you. To learn more and to join Generation America, visit GenerationAmerica.org. Here's your Speak Up and Stay Alive O oh moment with Pat Rulo, your healthcare navigation hostess, serving you a generous helping of everything you need to know to help you and your loved ones stay safe during any doctor or hospital visit. To avoid dangerous drug reactions, you have to take charge. Here's a little known resource, your pharmacist. A pharmacist is trained in all things drug related. And here's a smart idea, get all of your medications from the same pharmacy. Why? Because that way your record is in one central location. Many of us see several doctors and each doctor may prescribe a medication that unknowingly might conflict with current prescriptions. When all prescriptions are filled at the same pharmacy, the pharmacy's computer system will flag any potential unsafe interactions and your pharmacist can question it and bring it to your attention. If, however, you use multiple pharmacies, there will be no continuity of care. So stay out of harm's way. Make friends with your favorite pharmacist. Listen to Pat Rulo and Speak Up and Stay Alive Radio. Stay safe from little-known health care and hospital hazards. To learn more, go to speakupandstayalive.com. That's speakupandstayalive.com. 
You are listening to Speak Up and Stay Alive, Patient Safety Radio, every Saturday morning in Cleveland, Ohio, and every Saturday and Sunday morning in Phoenix, Arizona. I am Pat Rulo, your hostess and author of the book, Speak Up and Stay Alive, the Patient Advocate Hospital Survival Guide, available at all of our live speaking events or at our website, speakupandstayalive.com. That's where you can also locate radio showtimes, dates, and station information. That's speakupandstayalive.com. And if you want to purchase the book but do not have Internet access, it's okay to call me. Lots of folks order the book by phone. So give me a call, 440-725-5462. Well, today we talked about some general hospital tips on how to be a good visitor. You probably never thought about that before, huh? But a visitor has the potential to spread bacteria through poor hand washing or spread allergens via flowers and balloons or compromise the patient in many other ways. Most is common sense, but if you remember some of the anecdotes I shared earlier, some folks are clueless. And our guest segment exploded with our firecracker weekly guest experts. I just love these guys and gals and encourage you to use them to help you survive any health care or hospital encounter that finds you. Now, if you missed today's show, you might be in some trouble, but you can still find out how to stay safe by visiting the website speakupandstayalive.com. When you're there, you can listen to today's show in its entirety, and you can also purchase the book Speak Up and Stay Alive, The Patient Advocate Hospital Survival Guide, written by me, just for you. Two ways to get out of trouble and into the winner's circle. And I think it's safe to say that When you join us each week, you may be adding years to your life or to the life of someone you know and love. So set your alarm clocks for Saturday and Sunday mornings and tune in and tell your friends. Patient safety should not be a secret. Start your week with an O. Speak up and stay alive radio. And let me take a moment to thank all of our radio sponsors and our weekly guest experts because thanks to them, we are here and that helps keep you safe. In Cleveland, we have Schraff & King, attorneys for all of your advanced planning needs in Willoughby Hills, Ohio. Daryl Hicks, consultant and author of the book, Infection Prevention for Dummies. Generation America, the AARP alternative. Elizabeth Bailey, author of The Patient's Checklist and The Junction Auto Family in beautiful Chardon, Ohio. And in Arizona, we have Mountain View Funeral Home and Cemetery in Mesa and Queen Creek. Power tags, titles, and more in Queen Creek, Generation America, the AARP Alternative, Elizabeth Bailey, author of The Patient's Checklist, Hari Khalsa, your champion for healthcare advocacy solutions, Casey Quinlan, Mighty Casey Media, and author of Cancer for Christmas, and the Coyote Coupon Books. I encourage you to support these fine folks, and you can find their information at the speakupandstayalive.com website. And be sure to listen next week because our guest is someone you will not find on any old radio show. Dr. Lucian Leap is a physician and a professor at Harvard School of Public Health who is very active in trying to improve the medical system to reduce medical error and believes in the need to make patient safety a national priority. He travels the world to give talks and lectures, influencing many of the world's brightest physicians. Dr. Leap is internationally recognized as a leader of the patient safety movement, and you'll be able to hear him on this show. This is big, folks, and it's here at Speak Up and Stay Alive Patient Safety Radio just for you. So call your peeps and tell them to cancel all plans. Mark your calendar. Set your alarms. For when? That's for next Saturday morning, where you can find us in Cleveland, Ohio, from 7 to 8 Eastern, on AM 1420 WHK and from 9 to 10 Eastern on AM 1220 WHKW. On Saturday mornings in Phoenix, Arizona from 6 to 7 Mountain Time on AM 1360 KPXQ. And then on Sunday morning in Phoenix, you can listen from 9 to 10 Mountain Time on AM 960 KKNT. Or you can always listen live via the internet Check the speakupandstayalive.com website to find out how. In the meantime, I hope you have a healthy and a happy week. I am Pat Rulo, 
and I am your guide to safe and successful health care and hospital encounters. The information provided in today's broadcast is for informational purposes only and was not intended for use as diagnosis or treatment of a health problem and should not be considered as medical advice. If you've missed part of today's show or just want to share the information with friends, you can listen to all of Pat's previous shows at speakupandstayalive.com. Want even more information? Purchase a copy of Pat's book at speakupandstayalive.com. Once again, it's speakupandstayalive.com. Have questions or comments? Become a friend on Facebook. We're called Speak Up and Stay Alive. Or you can call Pat at 440-725-5462. Until next week, remember, it's okay to ask others to wash their hands. You have to speak up and stay alive. Generation America supports Speak Up and Stay Alive Radio. Generation America, the smart, conservative, and traditional 50-plus membership organization. Generation America cares what their members think about the issues affecting seniors and ensure their voices are heard. And they provide a full range of benefits to members. If you're looking for quality Medicare supplement, their rates are lower than the other 50-plus organization, three out of four times. Generation America, on the right side for seniors. To join and to find out more, visit GenerationAmerica.org. Happy birthday, America. (laughs) 